Good day everyone! This tutorial elaborates problem solving involving inverse functions and this is actually the fifth week of our subject in general mathematics day one to day two. Let's start with day one. We can apply the concept of inverse functions in solving word problems involving reversible processes. When we say reversible, that is actually inverse. For example, you asked a friend to think of a non-negative number. Add 2 to the number, square the number, multiply the result by 3, and divide the result by 2. If the result is 54, what is the original number? Construct the inverse function that will provide the original number if the result is given. So to solve this, to find the original number, we need to consider the different given percentage in the problem. So let us have this one first. Think of a non-negative number. Now the unknown is the non-negative number. We let that non-negative number be our x. This is our starting point. Now, for our function f of x equals First, add 2 to the number. Adding 2 to that number means x plus 2. Have you followed? Okay, good. Next, square the number. When we say square the number, we actually put an exponent of 2. Okay, that's why we have here parenthesis, quantity x plus 2, and then exponent 2. Next is multiply the result by 3. So that means times 3. This dot indicates multiplication. And then next, divide the result by 2. When we say divide the result by 2, we use the operation division. So we have here the symbol over 2. So now we already have our function f of x equals square of quantity x plus 2 times 3 all over 2 or we can also rewrite it this way, f of x equals 3 times the square of quantity x plus 2 over 2. Now this function is, as you can see, a quadratic function. And based on your prior knowledge regarding quadratic function, the graph of it is a parabola like this. This is not a one-to-one -one function since it does not satisfy the horizontal line test. When we draw a horizontal line, it touches the graph at least two points. That's why this is not a one-to-one -one function. However, in the problem presented a while ago, it was clear that we need to think of a non-negative number. So when we restrict the domain to the set of all x's where x is an element of real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to zero, the graph of it is like this. Therefore, this is already a one-to-one -one function and we can find its inverse. So now, let's continue. To find the inverse, you already know the steps. First, write the function in terms of y. So f of x will be replaced with y. And then just copy the remaining part of the equation. Next step is to interchange x and y. That means, by loonin nyo, ang y mahimong x, ang x mahimong y. So we have here, x equals 3 times quantity y plus 2. Then exponent 2 all over 2. As you can see, gibaylo na tong x, so gang y. And then third step is to solve for y in terms of x. To do that one, first, we need to get rid of over 2. So, para mawala ni siya, mahabili na lang is kaninga line. We apply cross multiplication. So, that would lead us to quantity 2x equals 3 times quantity square of y plus 2. Next is divide both sides of the equation with 3. Para makancel na si 3. So, ang habilin, 2x over 3 equals the square of y plus 2. Since we have this exponent 2 pa, let us isolate that 1 or let us eliminate the exponent 2 by placing the inverse of square which is of course square root. So place 
a squared sign on both sides of the equation and we can cancel out here the squared sign and the exponent 2 so diri nahabilin of course wala kay makancel na copy ra na siya now we have here the square root of quantity 2x over 3 equals y plus 2 and then finally so that y will be the remaining variable on the other side we transpose positive 2 and since it is positive when we transpose it it's already negative and so we have square root of quantity 2x over 3 minus 2 equals y or we can write it as y equals square root of quantity 2x over 3 minus 2 this is already the inverse of our original function and since we already have constructed the inverse function we evaluate now the inverse function at x equals 54 so that we can determine the original number so this is the inverse function now just replace x with 54 so we have here 2 times 54 all over 3 then minus 2 don't forget the squared sign and then 2 times 54 is 108 next step 108 divided by 3 is 36 now the square root of 36 is of course positive 6 we consider only the positive number since it is clear in the problem that we need to use non-negative number so that's why we only use 6 not negative 6 so 6 minus 2 is 4 therefore the original number is 4 now let's try to check if 4 is really the original number let's reverse the operation or let's have it in a minus minus type if 4 is the value of that number 4 plus 2 equals 6 now square the number means 6 square is 36 and the next multiply the result by 3 so 36 times 3 is 108 and divide the result by 2 that is 108 divided by 2 is 54 indeed the original number is 4 so we have solved we have determined the original number let's proceed with day 2 still on problem solving involving inverse functions we have our sample problem the area a of a circle with radius r is given by the formula a equals pi r squared what is the radius of the circle if its area is 9 pi? Construct an inverse function to determine the result. For our solution, we need to solve for r in terms of a. So our starting point, we have the formula of the area of a circle, a equals pi r squared. And we need to solve for r in terms of a. On the next line, a over pi equals r squared. What have you observed? Ang pi sa right side natangtang na siya. Ano natangtang na siya? Divide both sides with pi para matangtang si pi diri sa titas. So that's why the remaining is a over pi equals r squared. Next, put a square root sign so that we can cancel the exponent 2. Okay? So the remaining is square root of quantity a over pi equals r or r equals square root of quantity a over pi. So this is already our inverse function. Let's continue. So to find our radius, we substitute our area given in the problem. Now the area is 9 pi. That's why we substitute it here. And the 9 pi over pi is just 9. So r equals square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. It could also be that the square root of 9 is negative 3. However, we only restrict to positive numbers since radius or length cannot be negative. Thus, the radius of the circle with an area of 9 pi is 3 
Let us summarize our answers. First, the graph for r greater than or equal to zero is one to one. It's because the radius or the length of a circle cannot be negative. Next, the inverse of the function is r equals square root of quantity a over pi. So we have already illustrated this one. Kung this ani nato siya nakuha. And then, the radius of the circle with an area of 9 pi is 3. As a hint in solving problems involving inverse functions, you just have to take note of the given data and then remember that a function has an inverse only if it's a one-to-one -one function. It's a one-to-one -one function if it satisfies the horizontal line test. If it's a one-to-one, -one, you can find its inverse and then you can just manipulate the variables you can derive it you can play with the numbers play with the variables and then you will be able to solve the unknown depending on the problem given so that is all for day one to day two problem solving involving inverse functions